So your boss comes to you and he says, I need a web part to display some information about our user. That's easy, you think. I'll just use the context. No, it has to be specific Active Directory information. How on earth do I do that? Using the Microsoft Graph API. So what is the Microsoft Graph API? Well, it's a gateway that Microsoft provide to give you access to a huge amount of data from all across Microsoft Office 365, whether that's SharePoint, Teams, Planner, Exchange, anything, and you can get access to it through the Graph API. It exposes a single API endpoint, graph.microsoft.com, and through this, we can access all this data. In this example, we're going to build a web part that simply gets the display name of the user, but you can get all kinds of properties, Active Directory, custom extensions. You can read all users if you set the permissions correctly. There's a wealth of information at your fingertips, and I'll put all the links below all about the Graph API. Let's dive straight in. So as you can see here, I've written a uh, web part that simply displays my name. If you've looked at earlier episodes, you'll see this is a common theme in our series. But this time we're using the display name from Active Directory rather than just using the user object that comes with the context. So let's have a look at the code. You'll see that in my code, I'm passing the context of the web part through to the TSX file. So this is uh, provided by the SharePoint framework for lots of things. But one of the things it provides is the MS Graph client. This is a pre-built wrapper that allows you to access all these objects very easily in a structured way. So we pass the context in, and I've created this little interface just to hold the display name. I've called it user item. In my web part, simply I use the state to set the user. And then on load, whereas I just use effect with uh, making sure it only runs the once, what I do is I display this user if we've got a value. Now, what does it do? Well, notice using the context, it gets the MS client graph client factory. Then I call get client, and this will give you an instance of the client that you can use. Then once I've got that, I go client.api.me. Now I could be using a different API here with the Graph API. I'll, I'll put links below, but it could be user. And therefore we could get all kinds of information about other users if we allowed it in the permissions. A little bit about that in a minute. Then what do I select? Well, I'm selecting display name, but this could be other things. It could be email, any Active Directory property. It could even be um, a custom one. And that would take the form of extension underscore tenant GUID underscore the extension name. It might be something like employee type, for example, if that's synchronized from your Active Directory in your organization. So I'm just getting display name for now. If there's an error, I write it out. Otherwise, I set the user to get the result display name. Then finally, I'm writing out the display name if it exists. So it's a straightforward web part, and I'll put the source code to this below so you can have a play yourself. However, you'll notice that depending on the permission levels, you're going to have to do some work in the back end. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, if you're using the Graph API, you need to allow it. And we do that by going into package solution.json and we add in here an extra web permissions requests for Microsoft Graph and I'm doing user.read. So this is pretty much the lowest level you can get, you know, the simplest one and it lets us through. But you could do things like read basic all. So you could read basic information about all the users. And when you do that, in order to debug and use that web part, you're going to have to first deploy it. So we're going to have to do gulp bundle production, gulp package solution production. And then once it's created my package file for me and I drag that in to the admin, you'll see that there's a bit of work I need to do. Now, if I go to the admin, so if I go to more features, apps, and we go to app catalog, 
and distribute apps for SharePoint. And I'm going to drag that in. Then notice this. It says, please go to the API management page to approve pending permissions. These are the permissions that need to be reviewed. Microsoft Graph user.read. So when you deploy it, you won't be able to use it until you set the, um, the permissions. And you need to be a global admin to do that. So I'm going to go back to the admin center. And where do I find that? Well, I go to advanced API access. And when I click in there, my web part will appear as one of the items that needs to be approved. All your admin has to do is simply select it and approve it to say that I'm happy for this web part to use these permissions. Now you may even have to do that before you can actually debug it. So don't get yourself stuck in a cycle of debugging and thinking, why isn't this working? It may be that it just needs approving uh, on the uh, admin screen. So I hope you found this brief introduction to the Graph API useful. We really appreciate your support. So if you haven't done already, please click subscribe. Go to our website, robertsdevtalk.com and sign up for our developer journey newsletter. Or even if you fancy it, buy us a coffee. I'll see you next time.